Good morning, guys. I'm wiping the tears away. Um, it's Monday, and Brian and I, we are leaving today instead of Tuesday uh, because we are actually going to go to visit his cousin tonight in uh, southern Indiana. She lives in Santa Claus. So we're going to go stop by her house and stay with her tonight and have dinner and then head on into my mom's tomorrow. Um, and then I think we're gonna have lunch with a friend of mine tomorrow as well, if everything kind of works out, I'm hoping so. Um, Brian right now is out there talking to like the neighbors that have lived next door to Brian's mom and dad for the past 40 some years, because this is where they've lived for all of, pretty much all of Brian's life. He was two years old when they moved here, I think. So, and he's 45 now, so how you guys do the math. Um, but yeah, that's how long they've lived here. And then the same with the neighbors. They, the same neighbors have lived in the same house too for that long. So they're just all kind of chit-chatting and talking. And the temperature is cooler than it has been, but it's still hot and I'm sweating. Um, so I'm ready to go. I hate saying goodbye to Brian's mom because she cries and then I cry. And I'm like, oh, don't cry because then I cry. So sad. I hate this. Welcome race fans to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And they got a cute little horse or like car here. We're looking for the museum. So I think we have to cross like these little crossing blocks yeah, here. Go but yeah, look at that little sign for that. that. Yeah, that's cool. That is neat. Brian's some really cool stuff. It's a clock, but it's a watch. How cool we decided to eat before we go to the museum because I'm getting hungry. So we're going to eat at this Dawson's on Main, which is right here across, kind of like across the street from the racetrack, which is right over there. But this place, oh no, is it not open? There's a barbecue place down there. Okay. I mean, I think this is open. Yeah, I think it is too. It's Monday. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's open. All right. Cool. Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh yeah. Neat oh. I like the brick. Yeah. Menu at Dawson's on Main. They have sandwiches and wraps. And I think Brian and I have decided that I'm gonna get the blackened fish tacos and he is gonna get the black jack chicken sandwich. Looks good. So this is the fish tacos and they look amazing. So good. And Brian, you got a chicken sandwich, right? No, yep. you got the blackened fish. Chicken. Oh my bad. I'm sorry. Chicken. Yeah. Looks good though. Mm. Guys, so that place was delicious. So if you guys are ever near the Speedway, um, Indianapolis 500 Speedway or whatever, um, and you guys happen to stop off to get something to eat, Dawson's on Main is delicious. The fish tacos were so good. Um, Brian loved his chicken sandwich. Those fish tacos were so spicy. Um, and they're kind of like, they're the type of um, place where they're not rude, but they have that like attitude. Um, Brian and I kept drinking like all of our drink. It was like gone in a minute. And he's like, oh man, come on guys. But you know, it's like a funny thing. So anyway, um, and then uh, Brian's mom texted us and told us that his aunt, the one that was sick and couldn't go to the picnic yesterday, um, they're now admitting her into the hospital. They think that it's a possibility she might have appendicitis, which appendicitis, that's okay. We'll be okay with appendicitis. Right, Brian? Don't need to do all that. So here we are at Brian's Disney. This is his castle compared to my Disney castle. But yeah, he's looking at the cars and he's all excited about the cars. 1970 8500 driver AJ Foyt. Oh yeah, I know that name. Are you excited, bro? Ooh, he's so excited. <laughs>
here. He's so cute. And they have this how a car engine works. One, two, three, and four. The stroke, intake, compression, stroke, power, and exhaust. Number one. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's Out of nice. all of these magnets that they have, they have a Mickey magnet. Look. Out of all the magnets that there's here, they have a Disney one? What? I wonder why. What does this one have to do with anything? Now, I'd buy that. Andy car for Mickey. I love it. So we're actually getting ready to do the um, Kiss the Bricks tour. It's $20 for adults and $10 for the youth. Museum admission is included in the price. Track our track tour lasts approximately. Yeah. Cool. So once we get out of the track, we're going to take a lap around. We're going to have Bob Jenkins be our doing our audio. So he's going to point out different points of interest as we go around. As we get to the Yard of Brick, we're going to just going to slow the bus down. We're going to be able to get off. Was purchased from the pet the Presley Farm in 1908. There was 320 acres that is used for the motor speedway. That includes the grandstands on the outside. The facility is about as big, um, let's see, you can put a lot of things inside. <laughs> you can put the Vatican inside, Vatican City. You can put uh, Kentucky Derby inside, Churchill Downs. You can put a lot of football stadiums inside. But just to give an example of how big the facility is, once we step off the bus onto the track, you're going to be stepping off into the largest stadium in the world. Mm -hmm. Meaning, on the outside, all the stands you see are filled with people on Memorial Day weekend. So there's almost 250,000 people on the outside. And on the inside of the track, we get about another 100,000. So next we have enough people to have four Super Bowls in one day. A lot of people. If you're not a people person, don't even bother coming here. Because it's shoulder to shoulder people. If you're a people person and a diehard race fan like Jeff and I are, come, because something's always happening here at the track. If you wanted to sit at the track, where's a good place to sit to come to the Indianapolis 500? In a turn. Because you cannot see all the way around the track from one point, one vantage point. So if you sit in turn two over here, you're going to be able to see turn two, the back straightaway, and turn one. The only way you can see all the way around the track at one point is to fly into Indianapolis International Airport <laughs> and hopefully they fly in from northeast to southwest. You'll fly right over the track and you can see the entire facility from one point. It's not like the Daytona 500 or Daytona International Speedway where you can see almost all the way around. Our facility was built for the car industry, not for the Indianapolis 500. The car industry in 1909 had just as many manufacturers as Detroit, Michigan. So if you've ever heard the name of Duesenberg, Stutz, National, Marmon, Cole, or Oberlin. Now Oberlin is still in business. Anybody own a Jeep product? Nobody owns a Jeep product, okay? That is Oberlin's company now. Well, that was the Oberlin company then. So I'm about ready to turn on the uh, speaker here in just a second. We can get our audio started, so just give us a few minutes, we'll get the audio started. Hey, hey Jeff, I'm going to step out to turn it on. I'm going to step out to turn it on. Okay. And Indy 500 broadcaster Bob Jenkins, and I'll be your guide along the way as we make a lap around this historic track. If on this site in 1908, we would currently be driving through the fields of the old Presley Farm. The majority of roads at that time were unpaved and not accommodating to anything beyond horsebound travel. 
Indianapolis entrepreneur Carl Fisher had the idea to build a facility where automobiles could be tested and races held for constructors to showcase their new creations. As a result, in 1909, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway came into being. The first series of races held on track had to be cut short as the original surface of crushed stone and tar proved unsuitable for high speeds. Everybody hear that? An okay? idea was devised to pave the entire surface in brick. Work began in the fall of 1909. The project took 3.2 million bricks from around the state to complete. Almost immediately, the track picked up a nickname relating to its new racing surface. Today, people around the world know the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as the Brickyard. Mm -hmm. After two years of racing, attendance began to decline. Fisher, along with his partners James Allison, Arthur Newby, and Frank Wheeler, decided it would be best to hold one epic race every year. The Indianapolis 500 was conceived to be held every May around Memorial Day. Ray Haroon won the first 500 in the locally constructed Marmon Wasp. The day was a huge success, and the greatest spectacle in racing was born. We enter the track between turns one and two onto one of our short shoots, each of which measure one-eighth of a mile and are located at the north and south ends of the speedway. There are four turns, each a quarter mile in length from entrance to exit, and two straights, each measuring five-eighths of a mile. Altogether, these add up to a total track length of two and a half miles. You're probably beginning to feel the effects of our banking as we enter turn two. Each of our four turns has nine degrees and twelve minutes of banking. If you look to the left, some of the viewing mounds are coming into sight. These are located in the infield of the track and used by general conditions and workers. To put the size of the infield in perspective, you could take all 14 football stadiums of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Coming into view on the right are the Turn 2 Suites. Constructed in 1973, these suites offer a close-up vantage point to the action on the track for VIP guests and sponsors. In front of the suites and running throughout the inside and outside of the track is the catch fence. This extension of the wall is vital for keeping debris from entering and exiting the spectator area. As we ride along the back stretch, keep in mind the track you are traveling is exactly the same as its 1909 layout, only the surface has changed. If you're wondering what happened to all those bricks, most of them are still beneath us, buried under several layers of asphalt. If any cars were on the track right now, you could see them speeding by at roughly 235 miles an hour. This would allow them to cover a football field in nine-tenths of a second. For safety purposes, we keep our trams restrained to a more leisurely pace. You may have noticed a golf course on either side of us. The original course was opened in 1929 and underwent a major redesign in 1992 PGA specifications and the modern game. There are now four holes on the inside of the track and 14 beyond the backstretch. The LPGA and Senior PGA Tours have held tournaments here. Another event added in October of 2016 saw sections of the golf course used as an obstacle course with inflatable pylons set up for the planes of the Red Bull Air Race. Events taking place over the track are nothing new. The very first competition held upon opening in 1909 was a modern race, and in June of 1910, the Wright brothers were part of a major aviation showcase here. The official IMS logo, the wings and wheel, highlight the automotive and aviation history of the Speedway. Many of the world's great motorsport series have been held here at the Speedway. Since 1909, America's premier open wheel series has run here under the banners of numerous sanctioning bodies, AAA, USAC, CART, IRL, and IndyCar being examples. 
Austrian-born engineer Louis Schwitzer won the first ever car race held on the track, a two-lap, five-mile sprint averaging 57.4 miles an hour. On Beginning in 1994, NASCAR has contested the Brickyard 400. Jeff Gordon won his first of five Brickyards in August of that year. Formula One held events on the road course from 2000 to 2007. Legendary German driver Michael Schumacher captured victories in five of those eight Grands Prix. The world's top motorcycle series, MotoGP, also ran on the road course from 2008 to 2015. The residual rains of Hurricane Ike did not slow down Italian Valentino Rossi from crossing the finish line first on his Yamaha on that inaugural September race. We are now in turn three, and as we travel through, be sure to look to the right along the wall. You will notice the SAFER barrier in front of the hard concrete. SAFER is an acronym for Steel and Foam Energy Reduction. This safety feature was developed by researchers at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln in conjunction with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It was first installed here in 2002. The safer barrier is responsible for saving many drivers from serious injury and can now be found at nearly all major racing facilities in the United States. Yes. Famed World War I flying in his Eddie Rickenbacker purchased the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in 1927. Captain Rickenbacker actually raced in the 500 before he learned how to fly an airplane. He successfully guided the track through the Great Depression and installed many major safety improvements, most notably green and yellow warning lights, 1935. During World War II, the track was shut down as the nation's attention shifted to the conflict overseas. Unlike the first World War, the ground service and aviation repair and refueling depot, the track was largely unused from 1942 to 45 and began to be reclaimed by nature. At the urging of three-time 500 winner Wilbur Shaw, Terre Haute businessman Tony Holman saved the track from demolition in 1945, purchasing it for $750,000. The facility is still privately owned and operated by the Holman George family. If you look to the left, you'll see a portion of the road course. Early plans for the speedway called for the inclusion of a road course to find its way through the infield of the soon-to-be famous oval. But due to time and monetary constraints, it would be 90 years until its creation. The road course extension was finally installed at the dawn of the new millennium to attract Formula One racing. The course's original layout had 13 turns and measured 2.605 miles in length. It has since been modified for Indy cars and better passing opportunities. In its current format, the road course consists of 14 turns and measures 2.439 miles in length. Here we are on the front straight. The first thing you might have noticed is the canyon effect created by the grandstands on both sides of the track. They may be empty now, but on race day for the 500, every one of these seats will be occupied. There's no sight quite like it in all of sports. Filled to capacity, the Speedway can hold an excess of 350,000 people. For perspective, that's larger than the city of Cincinnati and equals the entire population of the country of Iceland. You will notice a wall separating the racing portion of the front straight mm -hmm. from pit lane. The original version of this was installed in 1957 and may have been the first of its kind anywhere in the world. This innovation allowed an area for cars to slow while being separated from the high speed action on the track. During the early days of the 500 pit stops would last several minutes, often when a relief driver temporarily took over for the exhausted original driver. Today, IndyCar crews can change a full set of tires and fuel up a car in less than 10 seconds. Coming into view on the left is Victory Podium. This unique design of the structure is a combination of the trophies of the Indianapolis 500 and Brickyard 400. Both can frequently be seen on display within the museum. The tall building adjacent to Victory Podium is the Pagoda. 
The current structure opened in 2000 and is the location for timing and scoring, master control, media broadcasts, and private suites. It is the equivalent in height to a 13-story building and offers a breathtaking vantage point of the track and downtown Indianapolis from its top floors. There have been several different versions of the Japanese-style pagoda throughout the history of the track dating back to its earliest days. Running through the pagoda and onto the racing the surface is a link right to the past, here. the Yard of Bricks. Every brick you see dates back to the original surface in 1909. The front stretch remained predominantly brick until October of 1961 when the entire track was paved with asphalt with the exception of this narrow strip. These bricks remain as a fitting testament to all the drivers past and present who have come to central Indiana in search of racing immortality. To the south, so we face to the south. So here we go, this is what you do. Right here you sit back, you get your picture taken. Then I'll ask you to say, please go down. Hand here, hand here. Kiss, stay down for a second, come back up. Now it is a little warm, mm -hmm. so if you get a little hot or if you don't want to kiss the bricks and get a family portrait or whatever you like to do, Jeff and I would be happy to do that. Yeah. I only had one. Ready? 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 The concrete structures you see were constructed in 1986, but there have been garages in that location since 1914. Placed above the entrance to Gasoline Alley is one of the Speedway's high-definition video screens designed to enhance fan experience. The garages located directly off pit lane were constructed in 2000 for Formula One and are currently used by NASCAR. The Speedway has seen many celebrities through its gates, from Hollywood screen legends Clark Gable, Shirley MacLaine, and James Garner, to modern day well-knowns like Chris Hemsworth, Kelly Clarkson, and Jake Gyllenhaal. an hour not factoring in our stop at the bricks the fastest official lap ever turned here was by Ari Leyendijk in 1996 it was slightly faster averaging over 237 miles an hour wow. when in the museum please take time to watch the video within the Tony Hallman theater it will play on a 10-minute loop and offers a visual history of the track you just lapped around if interested in climbing into an actual Indy car and having your picture taken, we have one available. It's located within the museum exhibition area. There are also two souvenir gift shops located at the front entrance of the museum. Though located within the Speedway, the museum is actually a separate not-for-profit foundation. Any funds or donations acquired is put toward maintaining our world-class automobile collection and the continual operation of So we are about ready to leave. There's the racetrack right up there. And we go underneath this bridge to get to the racetrack and the museum. So very cool. Very enjoyable. <laughs> 
Okay, so Sapphire's in. Sapphire's in, you know. So we are watching through the screen here what Devin's flying. Oh. So I know where I'm at. Oh, you do? Brian. Yeah, no, that's why I was already trying to get a grasp of it. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's going over there. That's cool. I like that. Oh no! <laughs> he went into weeds. Wow, those things are so dang fast. I love them. I want one so bad, babe. That's what I want for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Takes a long time right. to learn to fly them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have wanted one though for a very long time. Does Ray have the virtual reality? No. Um, no? Nope. So hey guys, think I could... we made it to Santa Claus, Indiana. That is where Brian's cousin, Lisa, lives. And this is her pretty little puppy, Sapphire. Sapphire, come here, say hello. Say hello to the people. Yes, say hello to the people. Hi, hello. Sapphire the puppy is so pretty and cute. Yeah, so pretty. Such a pretty little puppy. Yeah, she's a baby. Um, but yeah, this is uh, Santa Claus, Indiana. This is where they do everything. Like, this whole town is nothing but like Christmas. But um, Lisa and Devin moved into this house, I don't know, a couple years ago, and then just redid everything. But this is kind of what their like little kitchen area looks like. Um, her husband made this table, made it, and it's all that old like barn wood. But yeah, he did a great job. And then they made all that stuff too, all of their artwork. But this is what her like kitchen looks like. It's so pretty. And then they um, play pool like professionally. So they have a pool room, pool table and stuff. You guys look at this. This is about ready to happen. And I just don't want to miss it when it does because it's going to be so epic. It's almost there. It was just at 3998 a few minutes ago and earlier. And now, now it's 3999. Oh, oh my God. It just did it. It just hit 4,000. I just hit 4,000. Oh my God. I just watched it. That is amazing. Now watch it probably go back down. <laughs> It'll go back down. Oh, I didn't want it to go back down. Oh my God, oh my God, that was so epic. And I caught it right on time. That was so amazing. Okay, so Brian and I are about ready to go to bed. He is taking a shower and um, I have on, what is this, like house hunters or something. And uh, so we're gonna go to bed and then tomorrow we're gonna be heading to Nashville and then back to my mom and dad's house for a couple of days. So, oh my God, 4,000 subscribers. Thank you to everybody who subscribes and follows me and uh, hangs out with me all the time. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Good night. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I did, I was just like,
<laughs> I threw a fit. Anyway. Um, so anyway, so good morning and happy Tuesday. We are leaving Santa Claus, Indiana and headed to Nashville. But before we leave Santa Claus, Indiana, we're, we're going to make a few stops because this is what um, Brian's cousin Lisa told us to do. So we're going to go in here to the Santa Claus Christmas store because we are in. It is? Lisa said it opens at nine. Oh no. What time is it open? 10. Oh, for crying out loud. All Sunday right. Thursday, 10 to 5.30. Oh no. Okay, and so that place isn't open yet. That sucks. Well, if we go down and hang out there for a little bit, this won't be open by Well, time. hopefully that one, hopefully that other one will be open. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But the, this is just like a Christmas store where you can- another day. Like, yes, absolutely. Another yeah, just, day, another vlog. <laughs> another day, another vlog. Oh, that's so funny. But, okay, so let's go down to this other place. Which I have that one in my GPS, so. Alrighty, so next stop. So far, looks like it's open. This is Santa's Candy Castle. So, yes, the doors are opened. Yes, good deal. But yes, here's more Santa Claus stuff. Santa Claus, Santa Claus. There's a little snowman over here who is absolutely so darn cute. And then there's the Grinch. Oh, I mean, the Grinch for real over there, not Brian. <sighs> Which he's supposed to change his shirt and he hasn't done yet. Okay, well, I'll take your picture next to the Grinch because that's who you are. We'll get it on the way out, what do you say? Oh yeah. I'm working on it. Ooh. Hi guys. Hello. Welcome. Ooh. Lots of treats. Oh yeah, we've got books. The Christmas tugboat. I have that one. Um, they've got. The Christmas Carol and Christmas Promise. Obviously they have Bibles, Star Wars, but these are the little golden book Star Wars. I love those. How much are these? Oh, I might have to grab those. So we are those. passing a huge, huge nuclear plant right outside of Indiana. And then we're gonna cross over this big, huge bridge over here, which looks so cool, into Kentucky. Very, very awesome. So desolate out here. Oh, okay, so Evansville is that way. I've been through Evansville before. So does this take us through Louisville then, the way that we're going? Do you know? Oh, I have no And then is it gonna take us through Nashville? Because that's a weird thing, I don't know either. So yeah, there's two breweries in uh, Bowling Green. Oh, okay. Don't open up until another 45 minutes. Oh, we're probably not going through Bowling Green for another 45 right, minutes. Right, exactly. Ooh, yeah, look at this bridge. It's cool. My nose is itching. Oh, wow, look how neat that is, right? Ooh, yeah, that is cool. Opry Mills Mall. We're right here in front of Claim Jumper and the aquarium. And I'm actually just meeting a friend here just to say hi. And then um, 
Brian and I are gonna try to find a place to eat. We're not sure where yet, but yeah. What is it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a huge and ugly eel. Yeah, that place is so cool. I like it. And we couldn't remember if we've eaten here before, but we have. Right before the big flood that happened here, yeah. They actually act, um, even have a Madame Tussauds here, because that's new, that's never been here before. I mean, it's probably been here since I've been here, but it's been years since I've been here, but yeah. Madame Tussauds, they have here, which I'm gonna go check it out, because I know they have Johnny Cash and Taylor Swift in here. So I think it's cool that they have one here. Thunder. Aww. That's like, could kill somebody. That is heavy. It's a good weapon. The coffee mug with the donut hole. Coffee makes me poop. <laughs> oh my, is that your book? Let's check it out. Brian's little book. Oh, don't do that, because then they'll think I, like, it's mine. It's not, they don't own these. What are nice girls like you doing with a face like that? We're gonna like vote that? no on the crickets. Anybody dare? Leave a comment below. Alrighty, so I made it to my mom's house and um, I've been helping her for the afternoon um, making dinner and stuff. So it is time for us to have dinner. So that's what I'm gonna go have. So good. She made an awesome meal and I'm gonna show you guys what she made. So that one over here. It's fine, I just have to sit by me. Um, anyway, I just wanted to show what we have because my mom made this wonderful vegetable medley which looks so good from Trisha Yearwood's. Don't tell her about that. Oh, Trisha Yearwood's thing. <laughs> and mashed potatoes and roast and fried green tomatoes with some awesome like salsa. That looks so good, mom. Like, yeah, it's like ooh. A like and cornbread. Ooh, it looks so good, Mom. Okay. Can't ready. wait to eat it. And there's my brother and hey his guys. wife, Kristen. And there's Bri Bri. Uh, 